Hi everybody, before we jump into this video, I wanted to encourage you to go over to my website, primitivelifeways.com, and sign up for my free monthly email newsletter. I know you folks will absolutely enjoy the content that's being shared there. We don't share your information with any third-party networks or marketing companies. So once again, go over to my website, primitivelifeways.com, subscribe to our free monthly email newsletter, then go over to your email inbox and confirm your subscription. Thank you and enjoy this video. Okay, so I am down here at the Museum of Indigenous People and this is the curator, Dr. Andy Christensen. And what do we got here, Andy? Well, we've got some Prescott uh, grayware pottery. And uh, I'll start by sort of outlining how this was, was identified. In the late 20s and into the 30s, several amateur archaeologists were looking at pottery in, in this part of the country, central Arizona, Prescott area pretty much and um, they were finding a pottery that, that they were calling black on gray. Um, it was an unusual pottery in that it wasn't a white ware, it was a, a gray ware or in, in many cases kind of almost a, a brown ware. And particularly J.W. Simmons was, was looking at this pottery here in the Prescott area. He was excavating some sites including Fitzmorris ruin, which was in uh, what is now Prescott Valley, Prescott but Valley. before then it was just Lonesome Valley, pretty much. Yeah. And um, the type ended up starting being called Verde, uh, black on gray, but finally they d decided to call it Prescott black on gray mm -hmm. uh, because it, there was some c confusion with stuff coming out of the mm -hmm. Verde Valley. And so uh, the Prescott uh, grayware, uh, which encompasses both the decorated and this, this is a decorated jar. It's decorated on, on the, the inside, inside which in the is interior. Interesting. Yeah. So uh, when I uh, came to the area in the uh, late uh, 80s, uh, the Yavapai chapter of the Arizona Archaeological Society was doing a variety of digs in the area, primarily trying to salvage uh, sites that were going to be destroyed. Sure. And so sure. I learned I learned to identify the types and became interested in the local uh, pottery. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the interests I had was in de identifying where it was made. And uh, I had uh, worked for uh, a, a, a firm down in Tucson that was doing uh, petrographic analysis. Mm -hmm. And they were fine being able to identify uh, where pottery was made on the basis of the sands that are present in the clay. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, oh, that would be pretty cool to do in Prescott area. So I started uh, having uh, thin sections made and looking at it in a petrographic microscope to look at the minerals mm -hmm. present. And uh, so uh, for Prescott grayware, uh, the basic clays are coming out of deposits that would be called residual clays. Right, right. Which means they have not gotten very far from the source. The and original. it's a granite. Yeah. It's a granite, granite uh, diorite, mm -hmm. uh, basically, which means quartz, a couple of different types of feldspar, and sometimes mica. Right. And you can see the mica here uh, uh, shining uh, on, on these pots. Mm -hmm. But not all Prescott Grayware has mica in it. So no, it's, no. It's not. Uh, a definitive uh, uh, identifier. Right. So, um, what I found at looking at about um, oh about seventy plain gray and about forty decorated um, shirts from a variety of sites um, under the microscope and counting very carefully the minerals is that um, these tend to have about a third of their paste is sand size rock. Yeah, yeah. And the two-thirds is either the uh, just the basic uh, smaller material or voids. In mm -hmm. some cases there are voids in this. And uh, with, it's interesting that with the uh, decorated pottery, um, most of the decorated pottery has mica in it. Oh yeah. With the de undecorated pottery, 
Um, only about two thirds has mica in it. So there's an interesting difference between the decorated wares, somewhat, in yeah. the decorated wares and the undecorated wares. Um, so the clays are coming out of um, deposits that are fairly close to either Granite Mountain, the, De the Dells, or other granite granitic areas. Um, I haven't been able to say for any given site that this pot was made from clay right here. Um, <laughs> yeah. I haven't gotten that far yet. Yeah, yeah. But that, that's a it's tough interesting task. that some of the sites that are pretty, uh, some of the major sites in the area, uh, the site King's Ruin, which is up Big Chino Wash, they could not have meant, made Prescott Grayware there because there is no granite within. Mm -hmm. The, the, the typical yeah. discussion about how far you go to get your clay is less than a kilometer. Mm -hmm. uh, but certainly no more than like three kilometers. I mean, right, it's, right. It's really, it's, it has to be with You don't reach. tend to carry clay very far. Right, right. So that King's Ruin, which is where the type, one of the, the places where the type was identified first, mm -hmm. it couldn't have been made there. It was traded in. Interesting. So. Um, moving on to so so we have a clay that's a that's a basically a residual clay. They're using a paddle and anvil technique, and in some cases you can see on the interiors. The trouble with these jars, both of these uh, jars, this jar in particular, has been reconstructed, and so it's kind of hard to tell whether you're seeing an anvil marks or not. It's not terribly common to see paddle marks on the outside. Sometimes you can sort yeah. of vaguely see them if you hold the light right. Mm -hmm. But it's more common to see uh, some anvil marks anvil on, the, on the interior. Inside. Right. Um, I'm not sure about this one. Down um, there. Possibly. Maybe a Possibly. Coil you see a lot of wiping and things yeah. going on. Yeah. Uh, so this this is a from a jar that was on a, on the floor of a site called the Neural Site along Willow. Uh, Lake Road. Um, okay. They were going to construct a, uh, uh, a housing area, and the, the chapter went out there and excavated yeah. these off the floor of, right. a, of a room. Right. Uh, this is from Fitzmorris Ruin, which is out in Prescott Valley, yeah. and was excavated back in the 70s by Barnett. Yeah. Uh, well, this was actually done by a, a, a group out of California, okay. who Barnett said, "Go out there and dig there." <laughs> and they dug in the yeah. in the uh, this room, and it had multiple pots. Oh wow! There, so okay, it's pretty interesting. Yeah. So, um, mica is kind of interesting. It's not clear if they're adding it or simply finding clay deposits that have natural mica in it. Yeah. But as you can see, it it it, it shines. It has. I, I suspect. Here's an example. Not a perfect example, but you can see um, a fair amount of, of mica speckling on the yes. surface. And, and the question is whether that was done specifically to represent water, for example. Yeah, could be. Uh, could be. Uh, there's, there's the shine, the, the, the mica um, in the in the wear has been suggested to be intentional and to sure. be attractive sure and by by their definition that's interesting I, I never I never really thought about the the water uh, analogy but uh, I it, saw that it by sense. one person and sure. again it's a speculation yeah. it's very yeah, hard more. to talk about right. how they would but right. then you get um, this is uh, Prescott Grayware and there's very little mica in here just mm -hmm. little bits of it in this particular clay right um, and the neural site um, was close to uh, uh, Willow Creek, but also close to Granite Creek. And um, there's not a whole lot of mica present in the Granite, Granite, Granite Creek, Creek clays. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's one of the things that's very characteristic of the, the samples of Prescott Gray where I've analyzed is there's no volcanic rock in it. Mm. What happens when you have materials eroding out of all the different formations into the bigger creeks is that you get a mixture of granite, 
volcanic rock and metamorphic rock. And so anytime you find more than a few pieces of um, volcanic rock, like basalt, mm -hmm. in pottery, you're talking about an alluvial clay, not right. a residual. Not a residual. Right. And so if you're if they were going down to Granite Creek and getting clay, it has volcanic rock. Kind of, yeah. And so that's a clue you're talking about uh -huh. an alluvial clay. Uh -huh. So they're mostly they are getting clays that are very close to the source. Mm -hmm. And that restricts kind of the choices. They're not mm -hmm. just walking down to the nearest creek, which would be logical in yeah. getting a clay. Uh, because that's not the way it was operating. Right. So, um, okay, so they're basically uh, getting a clay, they're using a paddle and anvil technique, they're then firing it, probably in, they could have been firing it right on the ground surface or in a, a small in a pit. pit, they weren't using kilns per yeah. se. Um, you generally will get on decorated pottery a reduced surface at least on the, the inside the the painted side right because they're using organic paint right and they don't they're being careful about burning the clay off but on the other hand when you do a reduced fire your design just kind of isn't as interesting yeah <laughs> so yeah so the yeah. design's still there you can see on the exterior of this particular jar that there is some oxidation going on. Yeah, and it's possible they were they were firing it like this with things piled right. Around and it. and that's that's interesting because I, I was just going to mention often on a lot of the uh, bowls decorated bowls that I've seen, the interior is reduced, but the outside is partial at least mixture. Right. And right. here's one where that's this is difficult. a decorated jar that's where it difficult. is decorated on the inside. You can't see the lines too well. Uh -huh. The Prescott culture is one of the few cultures in the Southwest that decorated the inside of jars. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what makes them really stand Interesting. out very right. unusual. Right. And it's not terribly interesting de decorations. It'll sometimes almost just be like dribbles mm -hmm. or spatters. But in, in some of the, the pots, if you look at the report by Franklin Barnett on um, on Fitzmorris, the Fitzmorris site, he will show some of these fairly elaborate designs on the inside of pots. Right. It's kind of odd to decorate a pot that would probably be used for storage or mm -hmm. perhaps for cooking to decorate the inside because you wouldn't really see it. And, and that's another very interesting aspect of utilization. So, so um, but. But as, as this particular pot shows, um, you can get some fairly nice oxidation uh, on the exterior of these pots, but you can see the line between the reduction and the oxidation yeah. is very clear. Um, this was in a burned room, and so we don't know for sure that this oxidation is necessarily from firing, although my yeah. suspicion is it probably was right. fired with this. It looks very intentional. Um, it, and it's, in it's, the fire it's you get a really nice right. line between this. This so smudging is not. Uh, it, it, it occurs on about twenty percent of, uh, well, ten to twenty percent of Prescott bowls. Hmm. Um, sometimes it occurs in jars. This isn't really smudging. This is just reduction. Yeah. Um, of the interior by denying access of oxygen, but in some a few cases you get Prescott bowls that are just wow. And that that makes me wonder because I got to tell you, Andy, I've been Kiowa and I have been experimenting yes. with with this reduction firing for right. quite some time. Yeah. And when we first started off, and and even sometimes now we still get it. We get these mixed fire or these misfires where the inside turns black, but the outside turns a really nice color like this. Um, so it makes me wonder, was was this intentional or could this have also been a misfire? You know, I I suspect they knew exactly what they were doing. I would agree with that too. Um, you know, this again, yeah. this pot came from a burn room. We have a lot of pots for burn rooms, unfortunately. Right. Um, and so we can't be sure, but um, we get enough pottery from rooms that clearly weren't burned and have this kind of uh, you have the fire clouds, you have the pretty nice oxidation. So, are they like the Pi Pi who really 
they leaned things against their yeah. pots intentionally yeah. Yeah. because they like these designs. Yeah. Now these aren't particularly interesting designs here, but sometimes they are. Um, so I, it's very dangerous to start talking about what people <laughs> yes. intended. Yeah. Yeah. Um, certainly, um, yeah. you could say they intended to have have mica showing. Mm -hmm. Oh, I mean, sure. Because the pot. Well, the that's a bold they, statement. They chose, and quite clear. They chose a clay sure. that very clearly reflected light. Mm -hmm. And you know what it means is a whole other story. But I think we can talk about and the shape itself. The, the vessel form, of course, was intentionally mm -hmm. done that way. Um, this this probably. Um, sometimes you can look on the interior of vessels and you get heavy erosion, which would imply that it might have been for a, a liquid of some sort, an acidic okay. liquid, perhaps. Agave beer, maybe? Uh, or they talk about drink? perhaps a, a drink like that or some other liquid that just caused the, the interior to flake. I don't have any corn, particular corn examples drink. here. Yeah. This is actually a pretty nice nice vessel this is a real this was a really big vessel oh, sitting yeah. on a floor yeah. that was probably for storage oh sure sure and uh they were storing a lot of to get through the winters a lot of uh of, of plants uh, corn and beans and other right. kinds of things so one thing about this i also wanted to point out one thing about this smudged interior we, we also experimented with it in intentionally smudging it and i found one method that works really well is cutting off pine needles, stuffing ah. them in the inside, yeah. and then covering the lid with sandstone or some kind of stone, and, and that, that gives a... Smudging a really of the interiors, especially of bowls, is a very common thing in the Mugion country oh, yeah. with the Sanawa. Oh, yeah. It's less common with Prescott, but right. they did do it occasionally. Right. Um, I would. This is not smudging here. This is not really smudging either. It's simply they were they were trying to preserve the... Uh, the design, the design from getting the burned off. Yeah. Um, now it's interesting that, that there is a type called Aquarius orange or Aquarius black on orange. Uh, yes. That is got the black design. And that's so quite they, a sandy clay too. It's, they, um, you know, basically that's a variety of Prescott. Uh -huh. um, I, the type name has kind of not been being used anymore. Mm -hmm. But you would get something like this with a black design, and obviously they were able to oxidize it. Maybe only for a short period of time that allowed the design to stay on, mm -hmm. but you get this really, really, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah. Impressive stuff. No, they, they, they were incredible potters. I mean, so They were. And, and, you know, people who talk about the designs, well, yeah. you know, the designs That's are That's how they viewed their great. world, you know? I but, mean, this is what they did. But certainly they were able to make quite beautiful pots exactly. for functions that they, they, uh, exactly. they used. Exactly. Um, so I think that covers pretty much. <laughs> we cover all of the uh, the different steps. The use the use of pottery. We mentioned the possible storage of liquids. Liquids would have been important, yeah. uh, but more critical for getting through the winter is is storing of things like grains, foods, and such. Yeah. And um, we found a number of rooms at uh, the Fitzmorris site and also at the Neural site. Um, that had multiple large jars on the floor mm. that were probably for mm. storage of things. Mm. And some of them had a little bit in them, some of them didn't. Mm -hmm. uh, so the question is how, how these sites got abandoned, and that's one of the sort of the open questions we have. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. All right, well, thank you, Andy. I, I appreciate you, uh, you yeah, sharing this information. And, yeah, it's. It, it's it's amazing seeing something that's that's this old so okay